Hi, this is Laura GB, and in this video, we're going to look at getting DevOps data into Power BI report. So here we are in DevOps, just to show you, there is our Epic, it's got some features, user stories, tasks, etc, etc, all in a beautiful hierarchy. We're going to get that into Power BI. So just before we leave this window, the URL at the top there has got the name of my um, organization is Hatful of Data and the name of the project is Products. So let's put those into Power BI. So here in Power BI, we're going to head straight over to Power Query by clicking Transform Data on the Home ribbon. We're going to create some parameters. So I'm going to go up to Manage Parameters and I'm going to go for New Parameter. And what we're going to do into here is I am going to have the first parameter called organization. It's going to be text and it's going to be hat full of data. Another parameter quickly set up for the project. So there we are. We've got our two parameters and I'm going to click OK. We now need to do an OData query back to, so that's the best way to connect to DevOps. OK, so that's how we bring the data through. If you look down in the notes below this video, I give you a link to my blog post that covers this. So we're going to go there now. OK, so if I go back over to here, there we are. There is my blog post. OK, and it scrolls it and it talks you through doing the parameters. We've done that part. And here is the first part in here using the path, using those two parameters. And then we've got a URL. Then we're going to take off that a URL and then do the do the OData query. So I am going to copy that code, head back to Pab query, and we're going to go for a new source, blank query, and then we're going to, on the home ribbon, we're going to go to advanced editor, and in here I'm going to paste in that code, and then click done. Now, if it's the first time you've connected to DevOps, it's going to ask you for credentials. It's going to ask you to log in. I've done it before, so it's just brought me the data straight through. Now, if we look in here, there is an awful lot of columns. OK, so we've got to work out whether, what columns of those we want. Now, it's obvious we probably want the title. We probably want the work type item. I don't really care about the change date and create a date. And there's a whole bunch of columns in there. Now, rather than go through all those now with you, what we're going to do is we're going to look at going back into our, our code. So if I go back to the advanced editor for a sec and just show you, I've got the path and I've got the URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in an extra line into there. So that comes after that line there. And there's my select. So I've picked the columns that I want to have come through. And then my URL here is going to be my path ampersand the select part. And I click done. And there we are. We've got it down, cut down to our just the columns we want. Now, obviously, you can test and look and find the other columns that you possibly want in there, etc, etc. But that'll do for now. OK, we're going to name that query work items. And that will give me the basics of what I need. But if we go back and look at my blog post, we scroll down. So it talks about selecting the columns and it gives you the code that we can copy and paste there. It gives you the code for some other tables just to make that into an easier report to look at. I've got my table of my users and I've got my table of my calendar. And they're very straightforward using exactly the same path, the thing we've just done there. The one difference is on the calendar, we've put in a filter. So filter greater than 2023. So what I'm going to do is I am going to let's do the users table first. So copy that code and go for new source, blank query. Advanced editor, paste it in and click done. So there you are. There's my three users. That's what I was expecting. And rename that query to be users. And I'm going to 
do exactly the same for the calendar. So there we go. I've got my three tables. I've put them all in. I'm now ready to close and apply back into my report. So we've got our tables in. We can go and see that we've got we've got data coming through. Let's move on to our relationships. And we're going to take the work items is my fact table and my users and calendar are my two dim tables. On the calendar, we're going to relate the target date because that's the one we're really interested in up to the date on calendar. There we are. Put those ones in and we're going to go many, many work items on the same day, many to one. That makes sense. And click save. And then I am going to on the the work items. There is at the top there assigned to user SK to the user SK there. They're both GUIDs. And we click save. So there we are our nice little star schema. Okay, it's a star with two points, but it's a star schema. And we're ready to go and create some measures. So let's go back into our report view for a sec. And we are going to add a new measure in. And let's have total hours equaling the sum of the, and there's an original estimate column. So there's one measure and let's just do another measure while we're here and let's how many work items and we're just going to count the rows in the work items table. So now let's quickly add some visuals just to prove that we've managed to build a report. So let's do a really simple little table. And from our users, bring in the username. And how many work items do they have? And how many total hours do they have? Okay, so there we go. We've, we've got our we've got our parts in there. And we also could do total hours by state. So let's do a tree map. And put onto there the category is going to be the work items state. And we are then going to go by total hours to be the values. So under my values, I'm going to go for total hours. And there we go. We've got a very simple little report. I can click on here and I can see who's closed things, who's got things active, who's got new ones, etc. In the next video, we're going to look at bringing in the hierarchy from the DevOps and how that works using a wonderful DAX pattern um, from SQ SQLBI. So press subscribe to get that video and I'll see you again soon. Take care now.